Welcome in week three of our MOOC Introduction to Communication Science. Hopefully you've learned something about the history of communication science. And of course it was a history in a nutshell. So it would be great if you check out the further reading section. Uh, we call it a little box of nuance. And there's a lively debate developing on Facebook and on our forum. As you might remember from our first class, I've divided the main theories in our field in three broad approaches. The first approach is of course the linear effect oriented approach. And this was for a long time, and perhaps to some extent it still is, the dominant approach in our field. It is a perspective that is largely concerned with the presumed effects of mass and mediated communication, or in other words, the power of the media. I'll talk more about this type of theories and how they developed in the 20th century this week. The second approach was the processing and signification approach, which will be the topic for next week. And after that, we'll discuss the third approach that focused on how we use communication to construct our social and cultural reality. But for now, we'll focus on linear effect-oriented theories and the developing ideas on the power of the media. We left off last week at the end of the 19th century, start of the 20th century, when scholarly thought had now accepted the idea that the media were a political, economical and social force to be reckoned with. The 18th and 19th century had been riddled with practical examples of their persuasive powers. People were surrounded by a rich media landscape. Different channels, most notably print media like pamphlets, newspapers and magazines, clamored for attention. New audience groups had been discovered and quickly targeted. The political parties that were born in the 19th century already had faithful followers at the turn of the century. Their party media could count on a returning audience. This political press served as a signpost, telling their voters the viewpoints of the part in engaging other parties in lively media debates. Freedom of the press was seen by politicians as necessary for the media to fulfill its purpose as a fourth estate, a political institute and check on government power. And therefore, press freedom was adopted in many constitutions all over the world. It's not surprising that economists, political scientists and sociologists respected the power of and sometimes voiced an opinion on mass communication. But it was not yet a full-fledged scientific perspective, but this would soon change. 